So should I just start? I'll, I'll present you and then we'll go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, friends. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited to have you. We're excited to have Diane with us today. She's going to be reading Madeline. Um, Diane, you can go ahead and take it over. Okay. This is the story of Madeline. The story and pictures are by Ludwig Bemelmans. Published by the Viking Press. In an old house in Paris, that was covered with vines. Lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread. and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They smiled at the good. There's someone feeding a horse here. And frowned at the bad. Here's a, a robber running away with jewelry. And sometimes they were very sad. Can you see here there's a soldier on crutches with um, a bandaged foot. It's a little hard to see. Sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. In rain or shine. The smallest one was Madeline. She was not afraid of mice. See, everyone else is afraid. She loved winter snow and ice. They're ice skating. To the tiger in the zoo, Madeline just said, poo poo, whereas all the other little girls were afraid. And nobody knew so well how to frighten Miss Clavel. You can see she's walking on the wall of the bridge. That looks pretty scary. In the middle of one night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, something is not right. Little Madeline sat in bed cried and cried, her eyes were red. She cried and cried. And soon after Dr. Cohn came, he rushed out to the phone. 
There's the doctor. And he dialed Danton 106. Nurse, he said, it's an appendix. Everybody had to cry. Not a single eye was dry. All the girls were crying. Madeline was in his arm, in a blanket, safe and warm. In a car with a red light, they drove out into the night. Madeline woke up two hours later in a room with flowers. Madeline soon ate and drank. On her bed, there was a crank. And a crack on the ceiling had the habit of sometimes looking like a rabbit. Let's see if you can see that. It's a little hard to see. There's a, a crack. Outside were birds, trees, and sky, and so ten days passed quickly by for Madeline in the hospital. One nice morning, Miss Clavel said, isn't this a fine? Day to visit Madeline. They bought some flowers. Visitors from two to four read a sign outside her door. Tiptoeing with solemn face, that means serious face, with some flowers and a vase. Miss Clavel held the vase. In they walked and then said, ah, when they saw the toys and candy and the dollhouse from Papa. She had gotten a lot of presents while she was in the hospital. But the biggest surprise by far on her stomach was a scar. She's lifting up her pajama top here to show them. Goodbye, they said, we'll come again. And the little girls left in the rain. They went home and broke their bread, brushed their teeth and went to bed. They don't look very happy though, do they? See if you can see their faces.
You're frowning. In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned on the light and said, something is not right. And afraid of a disaster, Miss Clavel ran fast and faster. And she said, please children do, tell me what is troubling you. And all the little girls cried, hoo hoo, we want to have our appendix out too. They're all crying. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light and closed the door. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. And that's the story of Madeline. I also have another story for you. You think they wanted to have their appendix out because they wanted to get toys and presents also in the hospital? Could be. This book is called Is Your Mama a Llama? Written by Deborah Guarino and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg and published by Scholastic. Here's a llama. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Dave. No, she is not, is the answer Dave gave. Here's Dave. She hangs by her feet and she lives in a cave. I do not believe that's how llamas behave. Oh, I said, you are right about that. I think that your mama sounds more like a... What do you think? A bat hanging by her feet in a cave. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Fred. No, she is not, is what Freddie said. Here's Fred. She has a long neck and white feathers and wings. I don't think a llama has all of those things. Oh, I said, you don't need to go on. I think that your mama must be a, can you see she's peeking out from the, from the grasses here. 
You don't need to go on. I think that your mama must be a swan. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Jane. No, she is not, Jane politely explained. Here's Jane. She grazes on grass and she likes to say moo. I don't think that is what a llama would do. Oh, I said, I understand now. I think that your mama must be a... What do you think? That's right. A cow. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Clyde. No, she is not, is how Clyde replied. She's got flippers and whiskers and eats fish all day. I do not think llamas act quite in that way. Oh, I said, I'm beginning to feel that your mama must really be a... She's poking her nose up here. A seal. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Rhonda. No, she is not, is how Rhonda responded. She's got big hind legs and a pocket for me, so I don't think a llama is what she could be. Oh, I said, that is certainly true. I think that your mama's a... What animal has a pocket? That's right. A kangaroo. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Lynn. Oh, Lloyd, don't be silly, Lynn said with a grin. My mama has big ears, long lashes, and fur, and you of all people should know about her. Our mamas belong to the same herd, and you know all about llamas because you are one too. Yes, you are right, I said to my friend. My mama's Uh, llama, and this is the end. Both llama babies are with their mothers. And that's, is your mama a llama? Now, don't forget to check out the Reach Out and Read of Greater New York website for a list of printed and video-based free resources in English and Spanish, such as parent workshops, read-alouds, and educational hands-on activities for your children. And enter your email to join a newsletter to which updates about Reach Out and Read of Greater New York will be sent straight to your inbox. Reach Out and Read of Greater New York gives young children a foundation for success by incorporating books into pediatric care.
and encouraging families to read aloud together. One part of reading aloud together is to get the books. And if you have a library card, you'll have access to lots and lots of books that you can read together. In New York City, there are three library systems and the links to these systems are in the video. There's Queens Public Library with 63 branches. There's Brooklyn Public Library. And there's New York Public Library, which is made up of Manhattan, Bronx, and Staten Island libraries. So with a library card, each system has their own library card. And you can borrow lots of books and you can renew books too, which means you get to keep them. You just let the library know and you can keep them for longer than the original period. So those are my books for today and I hope you enjoyed them. That was wonderful. Thank you, Diane. Bye everyone.